Mechanical Resources, CEO William Jones. Good afternoon. Hi Alex. You okay? Nice to meet you again, Will. Well, likewise. Uh, Mechango, you will have you on the AIM markets on the 15th of June. You must be quite excited about that. Absolutely. This is a culmination of five years of, of um, work on the project. Uh, we listed in TSXV 2011, taking a project from an early stage all the way through to pre-feasibility study. And I think as, as the company grows and the, the project becomes more advanced, um, we see coming to AIM as a natural progression, broaden access to capital, and um, we see it as a sort of launch pad for the future of the company. You're just looking when you're listing with your market cap, around 2.4 after floods. Yeah. Uh, your, sh your issue share price is 3.3. That looks quite attractive, actually. Absolutely. Well, I think, you know, looking at the stage of the project, this is an advanced stage project. We've got a pre-feasibility study um, that we uh, updated and put out late last year in, in November. Um, we did two rounds of drilling, got a substantial resource out there. Um, and um, we feel that there's a value gap we need to close with our peer group and other companies in the, in the sort of clean tech metal um, sector. Um, so I think, again, we see there's a platform to close that value gap and advance the, the project to the, to the next stage. Especially if you look at the clean tech now, it seems to be the way a lot of these companies are going now. Yeah, no, absolutely, ones absolutely. Survived, absolutely. That's right, and I think you know you're seeing um, a bit of a momentum gathering in that sector as you see um, government strategies moving towards clean tech, moving towards clean energy, um, growth in wind power, hybrid vehicles, electric vehicles, and and what we're seeing is these clean tech metals that are geared to those sectors really having very interesting long-term outlook. Um, so I think uh, rare, rare earths falls into that category of a clean tech, clean energy sort of metal, um, in addition to um, being driven by consumer electronic growth. And certainly um, that, that sector is driven by some growth in emerging economies, so that's a high, high growth sector of the market. So yeah, the demand out that we think is very, very positive for, for rare earths. Are you the only rare earth player listed on the London Air market? I think, think we'll be the only focused rare earth play. Um, as I say, we've been um, working on this project for the last five or six years. We've been working in Malawi for the last ten years. And I think that continuity really gives us a competitive advantage. We know the sector, we know the rare earth sector. And, um, and I think as the company moves to the next next stage that'll um, put us in a you know a good position going forward. Just looking through your uh, pre-IPO documents, you're not just rare earth in your portfolio either. Can you tell us about your uranium assets? Yeah, uranium, that, there's a very interesting uh, exploration target. Um, clearly the focus, while the focus has been on rare earths, we have been uh, doing some work on our Tambani uranium project. Um, so that's including um, follow-up of anomalies on the ground. Um, this is an area where there has been exploration in the past, historically, um, and there has been some previous trenching work. And we've, we've gone back and we've opened up some of those trenches. We've done sampling and getting some very interesting uh, uh, uranium grades, also niobium and tantalum. So I think that provides an interesting sort of exploration upside um, in parallel with the, uh, the rare earth deposit. I've seen the news of the weekend, the French, they, they've gone across to Malawi to do some mapping. And they're spending 10.3 million right, euros. That's right, that's right. And it's a very, uh, it's a very interesting program that, that's um, been underway for some time. It's, it's a, um, a World Bank funded project um, and the whole country has been reflown with uh, geophysics. And we anticipate that picking out um, both existing and new targets and the French Re, uh, mapping, remapping program is really following up on those targets. We've looked at a lot of projects um, around the world, Central Asia, Middle East, other parts of Africa, and really sort of focused in on Malawi because it's it's a country you can do business. It's been known as a rare earth mineral <coughs> province for many years. Rare earths were, have been, um, you know, been drilled there in the late 80s by JICA and MMAJ, which is part of. Japanese government funded groups. Um, the first um, carbonatite, which is the host rock for rare earths, was identified in Africa 
in Malawi in the 1930s. Yeah. So there's been a lot of research and development over the years in Malawi, and we're fortunate to be working with uh, some of the pioneers of that um, exploration and research work. The thing I want to pick up from there, your presence in Malawi is for 10 years now. So your relationship with the government officials and the, the local community, it, it must be a good relationship, surely. I, see, I, think, I think it's all about sort of communication and um, letting people know what we're doing and also um, you know, completing CSR projects in the, in the local area. And um, and I think yes, I think that's I think that's one of the I think that continuity of management, building those relationships and continuing those relationships going forward, um, and obviously we'll seek to continue with CSR projects, um, you know, at a scale that's uh, uh, commensurate with our our sort of scale of the company. There's the question investors might ask as well when the, the look at the documentation when it comes into the markets, they might maybe pick up on your mining license or something like that. But you've been there for 10 years and you've dealt with, like, with local officials and so on. Like I say, you must be in a, a good working relationship with these people. You know, I think it's, it's, we, we found it one of the better countries to be working in Africa and I'd say certainly top tier country to be doing business. And I think it has a great, great future as, a, um, as an investment destination, as an exploration destination. Fortunately, in Malawi, uh, the country is blessed with very large resources of rare earths. There's also a lot of infrastructure developments happening. I think that'll sort of catalyze the development of, of these rare earth deposits. So you've got a new railway line, you've got a dry port planned on that railway line, you've got a paved road network, and you've got power developments. And I think that should really unlock um, these uh, projects in, in Malawi. So I think it has a, has a great future to be a major sort of sustainable producer of, of rare earths. Um, yeah, because, because people would look at it and say it was land, landlocked. So the question they would ask, you know, further down the line for you as a company, when you want to produce and you want to export you know, the yeah. rare earth and so on. Yeah, well, we, we're sort of, we, we'll be about two hours drive from, from I mean, a railhead. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. you know, we've got paved roads to within about 13 kilometres of the site, sort yeah. of gravel, dirt road. For the balance, so it really is very straightforward to get to the site. This is the question that I like. Obviously, the investors will be very interested in this. You've taken no physical monies as salary. Can you explain, please? Well, I think what we really wanted to do, and our sort of priority, is to, to move the project forward. So we really uh, want to prioritise expenditure on the uh, on the project, and in order to move the move move, move it forward. Um, so, so I think a, a bit of near-term sort of pain is, is worthwhile in order to move the project forward. To so say, you know, we want this project developed. Um, we, we, myself and Alex Lemon, we're co-founders of the group, and we've seen the project right from the beginning. So we want to see it through to the end, and I think that's that's really what's key. And I think for all stakeholders that, and for shareholders, that'll um, really where we'll see the, the, the value and, and the benefits being seen. Excuse me, unless I have misread it incorrectly, you've took no salary for the past year and you don't attempt to take any salary for the coming year. Yes, it's, that it's basically yeah. deferred, yeah, it's deferred. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It's, that's something the investors will look at because there's a lot of companies that you know come list on the markets and you know, you look at what, I know you can't comment, but from an investor's point of view, when people who watch this, that's an important thing, thing for people. Will you keep shareholders updates in that short term? When you come to the market. No, absolutely. We we want to um, you know obviously keep keep shareholders informed, and um, there's a lot of um, things we're working on at the moment, and we'll certainly keep the market updated on our work programs, on what's happening in Malawi, what's happening in the rare earth sector. So absolutely, we'll we'll look to uh, keep everyone up, updated. No, that's great. Cheers, well, thanks great. very much for your time. Thank you, Thank you. Alex. Cheers.